Oh, hi. How you doing? I was cleaning the grates off of my side smoker as I'm rebuilding it. I just built a fire right here in the barbecue and then went ahead and burned them all off, cleaned them all off and had them with a wire brush. But I'm going to use the barbecue tonight. Seems like all I've been doing lately is uh, cabin videos. Now I do have some other playlists on the channel. Toss those smoking bags over there. And one of the playlists that I have on the channel is uh, cooking on the Weber grill, on the Weber charcoal grill. And lately I've been doing like one big meal um, on Sunday. For whatever reason, I was feeling lazy yesterday and didn't do any. And uh, munching on that throughout the week. So I thought that since I had a big, big package of chicken thighs, go ahead and do some chicken on the grill and show you guys what I think is one of the easiest things to, to do successfully on a barbecue, especially Weber charcoal grill, uh, but is probably failed more often than succeeded. <laughs> So one of the things that I'll start out with here is showing you how to lay the charcoal out. Because most of the stuff that I do on the Weber grill, um, I always, I, I, I generally use indirect heat, which means all of my coals are off over to here. Now when I do chicken though, I do it all right in the center. So the reason why we do it all in the center here is because chicken, if it's placed over the flame, will always flare up. It will always catch fire um, because the chicken fat is so flammable. Yeah, that's probably one of the biggest problems that most people have when they're grilling chicken. And like I said, it's super simple to do. I'm going to get this, I'm going to get this fired up and uh, then I'm going to prep the chicken up and show you what I do for that. And then uh, we're going to grill some chicken. I'll even show you how to make a nice little quick barbecue sauce for it. If I have all the ingredients, I might play around with some different stuff today. Let me get this fired up. A little flame on there. So already I can guess that there's a few people out there that are gonna say, that's not how you fire up a barbecue and that's not how you grill chicken and this is how I do it. This is how Sean in Alaska makes his chicken. Um, I've been doing it this way for a long time and it really comes out very successful. By the way, I should mention the shirt, Making Lemon from Lemonades, another YouTube channel. So I don't only just make content, but I also watch other channels. Uh, this is Shayla and her boys on this channel and uh, she sent me a shirt, which was awesome. You sent me a shirt, you got a, you got a channel, you got a business, you got anything, you send me a shirt, I'll wear it. I love t-shirts, love t-shirts, long sleeve ones as we get closer to winter, mind you. Uh, but I love t-shirts all the time. So for this one, I'm using some Kingsford charcoal briquettes with hickory. Give it a little bit of flavor. I'm not going to add any smoke to this at all. Let's go ahead and set this up, and we're going to head on into the kitchen. Let me get rid of this first. Got a package of bone-in chicken thighs. We're going to head on into the kitchen, and we're going to—I'm going to show you how I process my chicken thighs and get them ready for. Um, the barbecue, what I put on them, what I do with them, and, and it's just something I learned in my family uh, years ago with chicken, and we've always done it this way. My dad was really not a big griller. Uh, Mom would do it on the gas truck or on the gas grill when uh, we were younger, and then my brothers and I um, all learned how to barbecue and grill on our own pretty much. But let's go process this, and I'll show you what I do. So for some reason, growing up as a kid, my mom used to do this with the chicken all the time, and... Because of that, I have never stopped doing it. And my kids do it now when they prepare chicken as well. So this chicken was in the freezer. It's all thighs. It's, they're all relatively the same size pieces. And what I'm going to do with this, and you've probably seen a funny video on this, is I'm going to wash this chicken off. Right? I'm just going to I'm hitting it with the water and just rinsing it off. Let me turn the camera down there so you can see what I'm doing.
piece of chicken, just rinse it off. That's all we're doing. I don't know why this started, and I don't know if it makes any difference, but for me, there's nothing I dislike more than having nasty chicken covered with chicken juice when I get started. That, and it allows me to make sure, since this did come out of the freezer, that I'm thawed out enough. I was going to do this like I said yesterday, but I didn't pull that out early enough to get it thawed. Like anything else, when you're going to thaw something that's frozen, your best bet is to thaw it in your refrigerator so that the temperature doesn't come up too much. Then I'm going to rinse out the tray that it came in because, hey, this is a handy dandy container, right? And then I'm going to take my chicken and I'm going to put it back in my tray. Now you could do this with any type of chicken that you want. You could do, you know, legs and quarters. You could do drumsticks. You could do um, chicken wings, I guess, if you really wanted to. Um, but one thing you should remember whenever you're cooking chicken, and this is straight out of the mouths of the guru of all food himself in my personal hero, the greatest man that has ever, ever uh, been on the airwaves as far as food is concerned, Mr. Alton Brown. Different different cuts of chicken will cook in different time periods. So if you if you can go with either just all one type. Either go with all thighs or all legs or all breasts. Um, and if you can't, remember that the bigger the piece of meat, the longer it's going to take to cook. Um, you can do thighs and legs pretty much together um, as far as that goes because there's so much bone in that leg that it takes a while to come up to temperature. So now what we have is chicken that looks like this. So the only two ingredients I season my chicken with ever is salt and pepper. That's all I ever put on it. Um, because if you were to put anything else on the chicken at this point, you're going to run the risk of burning it. And like we discussed before, chicken has a high, high fat content. You see all this? This is all the fat in the chicken right here. And you get that fat over the heat, over too high of a heat, and you're going to run the risk of flare-ups, flames. And chicken's notorious when you're, when you're cooking chicken for flaring up. Um, a little tip, just a little squirt bottle bottle while you're doing your chicken. Just take it, spray it down on the on the coals to cool them down real quick, and you could end that. You can eliminate that all the way. But I'm going to show you a way to do it without that. So, kosher salt in the daughter cup. And I use kosher salt for pretty much everything I do. Um, I don't really even have iodized salt. I guess I do have one little thing of iodized salt, but I rarely use it. In the house. So kosher salt and then coarse ground black pepper because hey, if you're gonna have pepper, you should probably taste it. And then we're gonna do that to the other side as well. And I always, for whatever reason, I always do the bottom side first with chicken. Okay, so as discussed earlier, we're going to make a nice barbecue sauce to go on this. And by all means, you can use, you know, uh, refrigerated barbecue sauce, you know, that you buy at the store. I have in here, as a matter of fact, I'll try that one too. I do. I can vouch for a little bit of Sweet Baby Ray's. Sweet Baby Ray's is great barbecue sauce. Ooh, here's another ingredient I think we need here as well. So basically, I'm going to clean out my cupboard and I'm going to make a sauce with it. It's really, really simple. I've got mustard. I've got pure maple syrup. 
I've got some spicy brown mustard, some regular yellow mustard, onion powder, cayenne pepper, black pepper, white pepper, some thyme, some basil, some smoked paprika, a little bit of garlic, and a little bit of oregano. Do you need all these? No, but I like playing around with different sauces to make it fun. So we need a base, and as I said before, that most people burn their stuff because um, they put their sauce on too soon. And what is burning is not the chicken, but what's burning is the sugar. So I think we're going to start with a little bit of honey. Because I have a little honey bear here. He's been sitting in the cupboard way too long. And remember that... It, when you're going to do your sauce, it's actually going to accent the flavor of your chicken. You can do whatever you want with it. You don't even have to do sauce. Another trick is you could just coat the entire chicken with lemon pepper spice. And oh my gosh, is it delicious. It is really yummy. So, I think we're probably good on the honey in there now. And then I'm going to grab... So we're making a base here first. Some pure maple syrup. Let's add about half as much of that. And then I'm going to add some good old-fashioned yellow mustard. <clears throat> and you're going to probably go back and add a little more of that later. I thought I had a stone ground. I guess I do not. Okay. Just a trick to shake up your mustard when you pull it out before you spray it in there. Or you'll just ruin your entire whatever you're doing, especially if you're making a sandwich. <laughs> Put a little spicy mustard in there. Give it a little bit of flavor. I'm going to hit it with a little bit of black pepper. A little bit of onion powder. Now, why am I using onion powder in this? Because if you look at the ingredients in your barbecue sauce, most of it, almost all of them, have onion powder in them. Adds a little sweetness to it. A little white pepper, because white pepper has a bit more heat than black pepper does. Thyme is a great herb for chicken. A great herb for chicken. So you can add a little thyme to it. Basil, because mom's a little bit Italian. Actually, mom's a lot of bit Italian. A little bit of garlic. We'll hit it with a splash of oregano. A little bit of paprika. And finally, I like a little zing to mine. So cayenne pepper. Be very careful with this. Because it will come back and bite you. All right, we have to mix that up. I guess I think I'll use a fork. Yeah, I think I'll use a fork for this one. And I'll show you what we've got here. Let me pull the camera over so you can see. All right, we've got everything right there. Then I'm just going to mix it up and I'm going to add a secret ingredient to it and I'm going to tell you what it is after I'm done. I hit a little more mustard. We have a lot of sweet in there, and the mustard, and the vinegar in the mustard, is going to give it a little more of the savory edge of it, too, so that you'll have a, a double shot barbecue sauce. Now, normally, at this point, here, I would go ahead and I would add um, beer, because normally, every time I'm on the barbecue, it with a little more honey here. Every time I'm on the barbecue, I'm also having a beer. So I hit us hit it with a splash of beer to thin it out a little bit more. But I don't have any beer at the house today. I know it's a crime, right? And understand too that anytime you heat alcohol above, I think it's 145 degrees, the alcohol evaporates completely. But I do have a little bottle of 
And this could be interesting. Experimental rye whiskey from some friends of mine who have been playing around with the idea of a distillery. So I'm going to add just a splash of that to this. So my sauce is on the thinner side, and that's fine. It'll thicken up a little bit while we're waiting for the charcoal grill to get ready. But I'm going to apply this sauce at the very end anyway. So in theory, I could actually take this sauce right now and I could put it in the refrigerator. Let it thicken up a little bit more. But I don't think we need to do that. I think we're going to be good to go. I should taste it. Always taste your sauce when you make it. See if it's missing anything. Pinch of salt. Got a good mustard on there. That maple's adding a different level of flavor to it as well. I'm going to hit it with just a sh tad more mustard. I mean, eh. Yeah, just a tad more. Because these flavors are also going to change a bit on the grill. And I kind of want that yellowy, mustardy hue to it. So look at that, folks. Just like that, we made our own mustard barbecue Honey mustard barbecue sauce. Let's head back out to the grill with the chicken, and we're going to get that started because we're not going to need this yet. Like I said, because this will be the very last thing that we're going to do. So your grill is ready to cook on when your coals have ashed over, and all of my coals have ashed over. A lot of people will tell you at this point you want to spread everything out. Not me. I don't do that when I'm cooking chicken. What I am going to do though is I'm going to take my chicken and I'm going to place it skin side down all the way around my charcoal. And the goal is to get it on pretty quick under the fire before it flares up too much because it's trying to flare up now as we speak. Do it skin side down because generally speaking that side will not stand if you if you turn it quick enough. There's a lot of fat in that chicken that'll make it work. Close it, open the vent just a little bit. I want some circulation in there. I want to see some smoke coming. And at this point, we're done with this tray because I will not put a hot chicken on here when I'm done. So I'm going to take this tray, rinse it out, and throw it away. Now, after a couple of minutes, and I mean just a couple of minutes, we're going to pull the top off and we're going to flip this chicken because I do not want it to stick. And if you watch, with the grates, I slide it to make sure that it frees up. Because one of my favorite parts of chicken and eating chicken is that skin on the end when it's done. It's oh, yummy, so delicious. At the same time, keep in mind that oh, you little got angry on me there. Like I said, at the same time, keep in mind that you want to stay around that ring of heat and put the lid back on. You know, I think one of the biggest problems people have doing chicken on the grill is that they, it, it's not like a, a steak. You can't just throw it on there and walk away and go do something. The minute that chicken hits the grill, you're going to be here working on it. If you want it to be nice and juicy and tender and, and well cooked all the way through, you're going to be here for the duration. Um, it's not a long process. It actually cooks pretty quick. Um, and there's a couple of ways that you can tell that it's done without having to use a thermometer. And I'm going to show you that as well. But make sure you have time. 
when you're grilling outdoors, you should be enjoying the nature, the beauty, the, the, the breeze. I mean, everything that comes with, with cooking outdoors. I'm going to turn this chicken again. There's going to be a whole bunch of that, so I'm not going to show you all the turning that I'm going to do going forward. Um, I'll show you when we start to see some stuff happening with the chicken, but you don't need to see me turn it 80,000 times. This would probably be a great time to remind you that if you like the video that you're seeing and you want to see more of these, leave a comment down below in the comment section. Make sure you hit that thumbs up. If you like it, thumbs down if you don't. By all means, it doesn't bother me a bit. At least that way I know what's going on. And uh, if you have not done so, consider subscribing to the channel. There's that little subscribe button. Click that notification bell next to it to all and you'll see all the videos that I have coming up. Um, a whole bunch of different ones. It's going to be a busy year. <laughs> now we'll get back to the chicken. Why does chicken have to be turned so often? I want you to think about, and, and by all means, if you're doing a boneless, skinless breast, it doesn't have to be, but why would anybody eat that? Um, <laughs> if you think about what, what the anatomy of a chicken thigh is, or a drumstick is, or a leg quarter is, there's that big bone that's running down the center surrounded by all that meat. Now, this chicken came out of the freezer, thawed out, rinsed off, so it's all pretty much where it needed to be temperature-wise. But the coldest part of the entire chicken is the bone. And if you've ever had chicken that wasn't cooked properly, I'll guarantee you found that when you got to the bone. Um, the bone itself is an insulator, and until you bring the temperature of that bone up, you'll, you, your chicken won't be done. So by turning it multiple, multiple times, what you're doing is you're allowing that temperature to go from the bottom up and then flip it over and then the bottom up so that you're bringing the heat slowly into the center and you're heating that bone at the same time. That way you don't dry the chicken out when you're cooking it. We've all had dried chicken. We've all had it happen. We've all probably done it. This is one way to eliminate that. Okay, now you're probably thinking, man, this guy's really going to show me how to put barbecue sauce on chicken? Yeah. I mean, we've done everything else so far, right? Here's our sauce. Liberally, liberally applied. I 
I do the bottom first because I really, really want that that glaze to get on the bottom of the chicken. Color's pretty, huh? What a difference a little bit of mustard makes in your barbecue sauce. And this is a honey maple mustard barbecue sauce. That I just whipped up inside of a couple of minutes in the house. Okay, and now, before I turn it, I'm going to pop the lid back on there and I'm going to let it glaze over just a little bit before I flip it over. turn it back over. Now here's where you run the risk of burning it, right? Because we know we have a ton of sugar in there. And the sugar and heat, now well, they don't get along too well. So at this point, I'm going to hit the top. I guarantee if you do this, when you bite into your chicken, it'll blow your mind how much more flavor it is. You'll be licking your fingers and your chops for minutes. You'll finish the first piece and you'll be all like, okay, I'll have seven more now, please. And some people like it charred. Now my mom prefers it when you leave it on there and it gets charred for her. So now we, like I said, we glaze the other side, or we, we put the sauce on the other side, close the lid, let it kind of glaze on there. Now I'm going to take a peek, and I'm going to make sure that I'm not burning anything real quick. See the color already starting to build out on those? Because, hey, a lot of people, every, all people, eat with their eyes. <clears throat> it could be the most delicious thing in the world. But if it looks terrible, your stomach's going to go, uh-uh. Okay. I always say that a lot when I get to the point of final, right? Let's cut into this chicken and see what it looks like. No, I do not eat chicken with a fork and a knife and pick it up in my hands. But I want to cut into it and see what we've got here. So... You tell me, huh? Look at that, cooked all the way perfectly to the bone. It's just dissolving off of it. Now we have to give it a try. Mmm. <clears throat> oh my gosh. <laughs> That's tasty. Mmm. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> Folks, as always, thanks for watching. Thanks for hanging out with me. Try this at home. Um, if you've already got something that you do awesomely with chicken, I would love to see it. Check out the Facebook page. The link is below. Follow me on Facebook and share your picture on the Facebook page to show me what you did with chicken. But have a great day. Oh, shaking the table here. Um, if you've enjoyed the video, do me a favor. Leave a comment below. Tell me what you liked about it. If you hated it, leave a comment below. Tell me what you hated about it. But make sure you hit that thumbs up. If you want to see more content like this from me, don't forget to hit the subscribe button and then the bell right next to it. So let me see if I get this right this time. The subscribe button and the bell right next to it. Um, and you'll be notified when my videos come out. I'm Sean in Alaska. I'm going to eat dinner. Have a great day, folks. Mm-hmm. <laughs>